Hey, it's Jonathan Potoshnik. The question is, how can I run and host a virtual office and who can help me with this? So we use a virtual office essentially. That's how we started out. We didn't really have an office. And so we had a bunch of people working from their homes and working out of trucks. And today we've grown considerably larger and we're still growing, well, we're growing a lot and growing quickly. And we still, we do have an office. I think there's value in an office, but we have a very, very small office. So we really keep our overhead very low or as low as we can. So here are some of the key components in having a virtual office. You have to have a computer system that will run your entire company. I recommend one computer system that runs everything. And that computer system needs to be 100% web-based. And what that allows you is the ability to, without having to configure virtual private networks or do a lot of difficult uh, configurations that will involve IT people and ongoing IT budgets, if you use a piece of software or a technology solution, such as Service Autopilot, that allows you to access all aspects of your computer system and lock it down by individual roles so that only certain people can see certain things, then what happens is you can get to your business from your truck, you can get to it from your home, you can get to it from your vacation spot, you can, get, you can have your employees log in from their homes or wherever they're working from. So that's the first component of virtual office. Along with that, you then get into a couple other things since we're talking about the computer system. As you grow larger, you're going to have documents and data files and contracts and videos and images. They need to be stored somewhere on a network that is equally accessible in regards to it's just as accessible as your technology system. Service Autopilot's got technology coming where all of that information can be stored in Service Autopilot, meaning you could attach client agreements and video and images documents to the client record in Service Autopilot, but there are alternatives. There's companies that provide what are called cloud files. Uh, Rackspace is one. Google is one. There's all these companies that provide what are called cloud files where basically you set up an account, you store your data files out on the cloud, out on this network of computers, and then you and your people can access that information from anywhere. And the technology's reached a point now that I do trust it. And if you go with a big company, if you go with somebody that's really put some money into the infrastructure, such as a Google or a Rackspace or some of these other hosted solutions, and they're running on very strong environments, they're, they're backed by strong companies, you know your data is not going to be lost, you know it's going to be backed up, you know you're always going to be able to get to it. And so then we've, we've arrived at a place at technology in technology where you can now have some faith in putting your critical information out onto the internet. This is how we've done it. We've done it this way for four years. We're really at that point now. And so you can host, so part of having a virtual environment is having your computer systems web-based, having a place to store all of your data files that's web-based. And I'll, by the way, a side benefit of this is one of the massive problems at most companies is the data is not being backed up. And it's not being backed up frequently enough. By storing, by having a web-based computer system, by having your data files that are of value stored in the right locations, all of this information is being backed up. The chances of you losing it now become, I would say, virtually zero. So you need to store your data, your critical data, and your computer systems. They need to be remote so they can be accessible from anywhere. The individuals working from their homes, those from the office, and so on. You also need what's called a voice over IP phone system. So what a voice over IP phone system is, is a, a, uh, a phone system that is not necessarily through the phone company. It's a digital system that runs over the internet, essentially. Now, these have been around for a long time. The data speeds on interconnections have now reached the point, or across T1 lines have now reached the point where you can have just as good of a data connection or just as good of a phone connection as you would if you're re using traditional phone lines, traditional landlines. We've been using voice over IP since the beginning of our business. In fact, um, all my businesses, all the businesses I'm involved with, uh, so many people use it. You don't even, you may not even realize how prevalent it is. It's huge. 
So a voice over IP system is a means to get a phone system. It's, it's a phone system without having the hardware that would have to hang in a, on a wall or in a closet at your office. It's a phone system that gives you all of the flexibility of transferring calls and music on hold and intercom messaging between phones uh, without having a phone system. So we have a voice over IP system at our office and we can intercom someone at their home and talk to them just like they were in the office next door. And we just pay a monthly fee for this service and when we hire a new employee, we know there's a budget. We know it's going to cost a little bit extra money for the computer system, a little bit of extra money to add them a phone line through the voice over IP system, a little bit of extra money for a laptop computer, you know, and that goes into the budget of hiring a new person. But now they've got everything they need to be efficient and come up to speed very quickly, and we just pay a monthly fee for those services without some large upfront expenditure I remember at one of my companies we spent that I was involved in, we spent $5,000 to buy the hardware to hang on the wall to run our phone system. And then we had to buy all the data lines through the phone company. And today, we don't have to do any of that. We just pay a monthly fee of a, I don't, a few hundred bucks and we have all the phone lines we need with all the flexibility of that original phone system I bought years ago. So that's another aspect of this. Um, I would recommend laptops for your supervisors and salespeople. I'd recommend that you give them air cards so they can access your computer system from their trucks, from their home. So basically when they're home, they can plug into their own internet connection, but when they're on the road with this air card, they can access the computer system. I believe in giving your key people good cell phones. We spend a lot of time on the phone in these businesses. Give them a good quality phone put the phone in a case, but give them a good quality phone so that they can do their job and do it well. Uh, part of being a mobile business, a virtual business, is to give your guys high quality phones like Blackberries or iPhones that are in a good protective case so that they can access this internet-based uh, computer system completely uh, in the field. So basically they have a phone that tells them exactly what to do, gives them the details of each property, what the specifics are, any job notes, and they can hit a couple buttons and it tracks everything they're doing throughout the day. That's another aspect of this. So those are some of the very basics. I'm going to put out a research paper on this topic that will expand on it more. You can look for it in, uh, in January of 2010 and you'll get a lot more information. There's about 15 or 20 points that go into running a virtual office and exactly what you would need. But those are the big things, the computer system, the phone system, and you know a place to store your data files and a means to let your guys access everything they need from the field without having paper copies of everything and then being able to track all that information in that computer system. So that's the highlights. I'll go into more details Look for that in uh, January of 2010.